Yo, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another Brain Dead. Um I was just on a walk listening to the last Coinbase earnings again, just a refresher because they announced their Q2 earnings tomorrow. Or I guess today. Uh it's early in the morning right now, but um Yeah. Uh, I think it's like five they're announcing at like 5 30 eastern so it's after hours but i guess i just kind of wanted to do a rundown of what i was thinking about the company and what i guess i'm expecting for the earnings and then just i guess broadly how i view the company and why i like them but i guess for this earnings i'm i guess my gut is expecting near break even to a loss. I mean, they said that they're willing to stomach a $500 million loss. I think that we're talking about for the year. I don't think that's a per quarter thing. And that's like generally their statement or their philosophy or that they've stated that they're trying to operate at. Just what they make is what they'll spend and try to yeah, just kind of th thread that needle of just pumping all their income back into the into the company to grow and kind of be yeah, as dominant as they can and just take advantage of uh, the industry being kind of young and maturing and just be like pedal to the metal, let's grow and do this thing. Like, which I generally think is a good uh, principle for a company. I think you should become profitable, profitable because you couldn't help not being profitable. Like, because you ran out of stuff that was productively increasing your productively increasing your business. And so, yeah, I like that that is how they are and how they're looking at it. And they said that uh, 2022 is going to be a build year. And so I guess that's another thing I'm excited or excited to see or expecting them to touch on just what are they building? What new progress has um, been created? And uh, a big emphasis of the last quarter earnings was their like an NFT marketplace or just getting into the NFT business. Brian Armstrong made like mention how he, he thinks NFTs is bigger than just like a digital art type infrastructure, but you know, it'll expand into like music and uh, real estate and like a uh, concert venue kind of entrance and or he. Yeah, you like kind of had a little list of like other things they can uh, touch into, which I agree. Like, I guess personally, one thing that I'm really looking for someone to be creating, or I'm just on the like have my eye out for it, is like a crypto Spotify. Like, what happens when we just start putting all the our all our audio content just on the blockchain as an NFT, and maybe you can that's how you monetize it. You sell fractions of that NFT or the thing as a whole, and the more kind of culturally significant NFTs will fetch a higher price because someone thinks it's cool to own that one or um, but or you're just so yeah I mean like you can do different things to like monetize for the artist or the creator uh, it doesn't have to just be that model but um, once these things start being like uploaded onto the blockchain because to a degree the blockchain is just this kind of permanent record of humanity or anything that you want to put into it. Like there's things like Filecoin and it's already some infrastructure seems like ready to go to allow this. But yeah, we just have all of our Spotify songs, all the podcasts just on the blockchain. And there's like a front end that um, helps facilitate like accessing it. And perhaps, I don't know, uh, Coinbase touches on that. They kind of have like a little bit of a venture arm to them where they invest in like um innovative things within within the crypto world like they are partners with like OpenSea and uh, uni labs and um there's some others like dapper labs i think and um yeah so they were paying attention to like what are the happenings within crypto so i eventually envision that there'll be like something that acts as just like our front end hub that lets us touch this world and access it and kind of manage it and i think to a large degree that's what coinbase is turning into is this like management uh front end to the crypto world and yeah that touches on like the banking financial aid type things because that's what crypto mainly is at the moment but crypto is going to be a bunch of other things also 
and it'll be like, you know, content access and storage and tracking and it'll just be the rails that we, um, I guess, exchange resources for digital items for like, yeah, and content largely is <laughs> digital and we can start parsing it and breaking it up. Like, you know, I feel like there's a lot of interesting things that could happen from this, but so I like where, like, what compounding opportunities exist out there for Coinbase, and I like how Armstrong is, uh, as like a has mentioned multiple times, the philosophy of not being complacent and always trying to build, and and I feel like that's what ends up creating a compounder. And to the degree that as investors, that's what we're trying to do is find compounders. You want something that can always like increase on itself. Now that it's two x bigger, it can grow just even that much faster because it is that much more enabled to like. Uh, act within the world and um, cause things to happen that is aligned with its objectives and like that's that's why I don't want uh, I feel like if you just start becoming like a money pile and redistributing to the investors like okay maybe do that once you have exhausted all opportunity to grow then sure but what the real value will come from is the th thing itself that you own is getting bigger and bigger and i think that requires certain f philosophical kind of stances that a business takes and i like that coinbase has those they're ones that i think are important for achieving that i mean it also comes down to execution you can't just have purely the philosophy but i want to have that philosophy at least there and then it to what i can see coinbase is executing much better than anyone else within the crypto world it gets the most dominant most trusted most significant, I think, crypto company that exists. Like, who else is there? There's, I guess, Robinhood, but they, they've kind of, like, they're not crypto native. They are kind of trying to, like, put dip their foot in. Binance is pretty trusted and significant Kraken, but I still feel like uh, Coinbase has the edge over those. And, like, we saw in... Um, like kind of those, uh, they've kind of all blurred now, but like those crypto uh, COVID months and quarters, like uh, when crypto was really pumping, Coinbase was like profitable as shit. It was almost like scary, like how big of a cash machine this thing could be. It made like, I don't know, 200 in net income or 2 billion in net income in like a quarter. And maybe it was even more than that, like one of them, like 2.4 or something. And just recently, the company was only worth nine billion market cap, and it had the earning potential of being able to like rake in two point four billion, like bottom line profit in a quarter, and they are, have like five billion or so in cash or something. That might not be exactly right, but they have a significant cash position. And, like they're resilient. They, uh, they look at their balance sheet again, but. It, the last impression I had was like there's like hardly any debt at all. Like this thing doesn't seem like it's like at risk of any default. Like what what risk could it present itself? I guess it's SEC stuff. Um, but is the SEC gonna bankrupt them or like yeah maybe they get some fine or something like that? But I mean it's pretty fucked up if SEC is trying to end this company for this thing that's like very <laughs> loosely even like defined. The rules are so loosely defined anyways like. But, okay, sure, that's a th threat to them. SEC involvement in government, how, I guess, power control lead the government gets over this stuff. But, so I just hope that Coinbase is trying to prevent that as much as possible. And, like, I guess they have to a little bit bite their tongue and whatever, but I kind of hope that's what they're doing. I hope they don't become, like, kind of rebelly and try to stick it to the man. Like, I just... It's cool and stuff, but I feel like, I don't know. I feel like that is just an area that just is, sucks, but you can't really do much about it. But, so I guess what I'm expecting for the earnings, I don't think they're going to be, like, blowing it out the water. Like, they're not going to have, like, some insane amount of profit, because, I mean, it, it's already their philosophy this, if they are profitable to, like, spend it. And they said last quarter that they, like, have the choice of being profitable if they chose to be. And that was even kind of, like, a, a rough quarter. So, if anything, this one might be slightly 
better in terms of like sentiment and kind of I don't know, things kind of like bottomed out and flattened and maybe became a little bit more steady. Maybe that actually means they didn't do shit for volume because that's like what bring, makes them a cash machine is high volume. I don't know. But uh, I don't think this quarter is going to be like anything special. But so the things that I am curious about is what or how have they... How has their intrinsic value increased? Like, what new abilities do they have in this world? And, um, like, prices, price of the stock will, like, respond to um, income statement type things. But uh, that doesn't mean that the company isn't a better company than it was a month ago or a year ago. And, and what it can actually do in this world, what agency does it have, how is it better intrinsically? And that's the real thing that is important in a company while you're investing is, is this actual raw thing improving the world. If it is a company that in which it's getting better, its intrinsic value should be higher. And to the extent the market ever resembles intrinsic value, it will also uh, increase in price as that mechanism kicks in. But all you can do is hope that, or try to measure the intrinsic value of things as they change over time. And so you want uh, the assets you own to be these things that are growing and getting better themselves, not like doing like stock tricks or whatever. And that's, what's going to also create compounding is that phenomena happening. Anyways, I'm probably just ranting now, but yeah. So uh, I'm excited to see it. I always like hearing what the company says and kind of, uh, getting a taste of how they're viewing the crypto world and what role they want to play in it. Um, I really like the company. Uh, one thing that I also like about Brian Armstrong is he, I think it was in like their, his Bankless interview, he had mentioned a book called The Master Switch that he like referred to as how like uh, showing how these different um, industries kind of rise and fall or get like uh, dis. Uh, complacent and a new one kind of surpasses them. I think it started with like Bell Labs and um, the creation of the telephone, and then and then kind of like the farmer started uh, running barbed wire to like get signal further. And uh, Bell Labs thought that was just kind of dumb and they didn't really care about like the urban areas, but that became a bigger market than the original one. And then like AT and T and those type of things came to power and rose. And uh, the Hollywood scene had a similar kind of. Uh, complacency that overturned them and um like yeah it goes over like case over case and building eventually to the internet and how uh yeah just how new things kind of make the old things irrelevant and i like that he's aware of that kind of phenomenon and he is always looking forward and not wanting to fall under that trap and um, cause I think that's where compounding will largely stop is when you like, can't see what the next thing is and, and go and create it. So from what I can sense out and I guess my intuitions, I feel like he's better at kind of spelling out the next thing more than I don't know, any other, other like kind of bigger crypto figures I see, I guess Mark Cuban, like kind of seems to get it but i feel like he's less i don't know doing stuff but yeah there's like people that also have that but i just like that the ceo of this company that i'm invested in is of that mind and those are the important things that i think in a company like warren buffett always talks about uh like that guy that was really good at insurance okay sorry my uh phone ran out of battery but this is a continuation. Um, yeah, Warren Buffett just has that insurance guy that he attributes as being like, what made a good investment investing in him. Like that, that guy was the important part. And uh, like largely I view Elon Musk as that. Like, okay, yeah, I'm not gonna not <laughs> invest in what the, that, that dude's making. Um, I mean, there's a bunch of reasons why I like Tesla, but uh, I guess like a super reduction. Like, yeah. Like, a lot of it funnels into how like crazy Elon Musk's mind is, but largely I think Armstrong is also a uh, kind of visionary figure and, or at least very um, principled and 
yeah, we'll make sound decisions. And I would, yeah, sometimes you have to invest in people and that's a person that I like to invest in. And there's a bunch of other reasons why I like Coinbase also, but th that is a big component. And I guess I'll leave it there, but yeah, I guess we'll see what happens with Coinbase earnings uh, in less than probably like, probably like 15 hours so okay leave it there